Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about UVs. Specifically, I want to discuss texture sets and how you can get higher resolution textures, how many materials you should be using, just kind of stuff that confused me a lot when I was first learning this stuff. So, here is a result for a door I created. This is just a very simple door, uh, nothing crazy here. And here is the unwrap result. As you can see, this is a very high resolution unwrap. These squares are um, at a very decent size, so that way when I texture this in Substance Painter, it's going to have some very high resolution textures. Now the way I accomplished this was by using different texture sets, multiple texture sets. Now, um, basically what I did, I'll just show you, each of these different pieces has a different material. So each material has its own texture set, very simple. So we can just kind of click through here and you're going to see you know, we have the door material, we have the center material, we have the supports material, the shell material, etc. So, what this means is that each of these materials will have its own set of UVs. Now, why exactly is this powerful? Well, I do want to mention that if you're using this as a game asset, you probably don't want to have this many materials for an asset like this. You probably want to use one, maybe two max, depending on how important of an asset this is. And let me show you what exactly would happen if this was one single mesh using one single material. The general guideline is the less materials, the less draw calls, and the better optimization. So that's why you don't want to use too many materials. So let me show you just the solution we would use if this were a game asset here. So basically what I would do is I'd have just one material on the whole thing and I'd probably have this whole thing joined together. So, so I'm going to go ahead and select everything and then press Control J to join it together into one piece. So you're going to see I have all of these UVs here. This is one single piece now since I joined it together. So let's see what happens if I unwrap all of this onto one set of UVs rather than splitting them into multiple texture sets. So we're going to go ahead and go to the UV editor. And this is just kind of a mess, so let me close this. So we're just going to re-unwrap this. I'm going to select everything, press U, and then unwrap. And you're going to see the difference here. Let me zoom in a little bit. You're going to see the squares are significantly bigger, which means the text resolution is significantly smaller. So you can kind of see the difference. Here's the before, the after, before, and the after. This is probably three times as a lower resolution. So. It's probably not going to be terrible, but it's not going to be as crisp as this solution right here. Now, what we could do here is also pack this using UV Pack Master and just try to get a more um, optimized result here. We could do quite a few things to get a more optimized result, but if we join the whole thing together, this is the solution we would have. The squares would be okay, but not the highest resolution we could get. Now for game assets, this is probably a perfect approach. You want to have maybe one material, two at most. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and remove all these extra materials because we're only sampling from one here. So yeah, this is just one mesh now, and if this were a game asset, this would probably be good enough. Another thing we could do here if we wanted a better resolution on these pieces is we could actually mirror our UVs. Now let me show you how you could do this. So I'm going to go ahead and just split this up again so we can uh, demonstrate. So notice how this piece and this piece right here are the same pieces just flipped over. Now what I've actually done off camera here is I have this slice in the center. And what this slice in the center is doing is it's masking where I would be mirroring the UVs. If I mirrored this piece, if this was just one uniform joined piece, if I mirrored it from the center, we're gonna have this butterfly effect kind of spanning out from the center. Let me show you what would happen if I deleted this half right here and then mirrored it. What we're gonna have is this butterfly effect that spans out from the center because the mirror point is directly in the middle. And that's gonna be pretty obvious to the viewer. So basically that's the reason I ended up putting the uh, its own separate piece here in the center, is so that way I can still mirror my UVs, but I'm masking that mirror point where that butterfly effect would occur. So what I could actually do, notice how these two pieces are occupying different areas on the um, on this uh, UV space, right? So instead what I could do to make this a bit more optimized is I could simply delete out this one, mirror this one, and now what's gonna happen is uh, we're only gonna be, well these will basically all be overlapped since the mirror modifier is alive in the stack. 
If I were to apply the mirror modifier, notice how all these UVs are overlapping. And this is going to optimize um, a bit more space here. We can use a bit more doing this. So this is another way you can actually optimize your UVs. You can mirror pieces that are symmetrical. So I could also go over here to these beams right here and let me just delete out this one and then mirror this one. And we can also do the same thing for these windows right here. We'll just go ahead and uh, mirror the windows. And also for this outer area, let me delete out um, this one right here and then mirror it. So now check this out. If I select everything, we'll select everything and then we can just unwrap everything together. Maybe hit it with a few packs with UV Pack Master and just kind of see what solutions we can get. This is just a quick and dirty solution. I could probably, you know, straighten out some of these areas and make them just a bit more, you know, suitable for what we're doing here. So I could, for example, use the UV squares to straighten those out. And then we'll end up having a bit more space to kind of utilize here. But yeah, now you're going to see the squares are actually a lot smaller now. Actually, what I do need to do, some of these squares are different sizes, so to make sure the texel density is uniform, I can go here in UV Pack Master and um, normalize the island so when I pack it, everything is the same size. Cool. So you're going to see by doing that mirror trick, we actually end up getting even smaller islands, so this would actually be a, a pretty good solution if this were a game asset because all we're using now is just one single material here. And um, if you wanted to join the whole thing together, what you would have to do at this point is apply your mirror modifier but make sure you don't unwrap again otherwise it's going to undo those mirrored UVs so we'd apply all the mirror modifiers here like so and then all we would do is join everything together and you're gonna see we still have our overlapped islands very good now I want to show you how you can actually use multiple texture sets so multiple materials to get even higher resolution this is a good strategy if you're doing a portfolio piece or perhaps just want to texture this without any worry about the optimization. So maybe you just want to bring this into Blender and get a clean looking render and you're not worried about uh, the draw calls. So in this case, let me show you how I would actually approach that one. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, split everything up into separate pieces. Cool. So in this case, we're going to do things a little bit differently. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, just start unwrapping this. So I'm going to go to this piece and I'm still going to use the same technique as before. I'm still going to mirror the UVs because my whole goal here is to make the squares as small as possible. So um, this one is going to have its uh, own separate material. So what I actually want to do here is I'm just going to clear out all these materials and um, we'll just start from scratch. Cool. So what I'm going to do is select this piece and we'll add a separate material for this one. We'll call this one shells or shell because this is like the outer shell of the door. So each of these different pieces is going to have its own unique material. So um, this is a very good solution if you simply want to get a good portfolio piece and you're not worried about the amount of materials. So this is how you can actually use multiple texture sets to your advantage. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, start with the shell here. We're going to need to add in a new um, checker grid here. So we'll add in a new image texture here, 4096. Make it a UV grid, then call this one shell. Click OK, and then we'll go ahead and connect it up. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and mirror this over to this side, and then simply unwrap it like that. Cool. Now this one's part of the shell as well, so I'm going to go ahead and give this one the same exact material. Going to unwrap it. Right now, I'm not worried about the size of the squares. We can deal with that later on. So now for this one, we're going to give this one a different material. We're going to give this one a material and just call it supports. And we'll do the same exact thing. We can just um, make a new image texture here. Click on new and then call this one supports. Connect it up. And I'm simply going to mirror this one so that way we can overlap those UVs. So we're going to unwrap it. So the whole goal here is to make this whole thing as optimized as possible. And then um, I'll show you the what we'll end up doing after we do that. So right now, just worry about getting as small squares as possible. And then we'll make the texel density uniform after the fact. So let's go to this one right here. We'll go ahead and give this one, we'll just call this one inner. You can name it whatever you want, really. So we'll go to image texture. We'll call this one inner, 
connect it up, mirror this one over to the other side, and then unwrap it like so. And then this one's going to have the same exact one. This is just meant to mask that butterfly effect coming from the center. Cool. Now same for the door. We're going to give this one a material and call it door. And we're going to add in an image texture. I think you get the point by now, but I just want to show you the full process. We'll connect this up. We'll go ahead and mirror it. And then we'll go ahead and unwrap it. And then for the window, same idea. We'll call this one window new image texture here window click ok and then connect it up and then we can just go ahead and mirror this because these are symmetrical pieces and we can simply mirror those uvs now you don't have to if you think it's going to be a bit too obvious you don't have to but i'm doing it personally this one right here we'll just call center so we'll type in center going to add in an image texture for this one and call it center and then we'll just go ahead and unwrap that one. Cool. And now we just have one more up here, which is like a light or something. So this would be the last one. We'll call this one lights. Give this one an image texture again. Call this one light. Connect it up and then unwrap it. Cool. So now let's discuss the difference from what I showed you earlier on in the video in using multiple materials. So by using multiple materials, what I have are multiple texture sets. So I have a texture set here, a texture set here, a texture set here, which means I'm able to use a lot more UV space since I'm not using one um, UV, UV grid to pack in every single island on this mesh. For example, for these supports, these supports have their own little island here. This outer shell has its own little island here, right? Makes sense. So each material is allowing me to use even more UV space. Now, we could of course go in here and just try to make these a bit more optimized. I could go to this one and try to pack it a bit more. I could even try splitting up the islands to make it um, a little bit more condensed. So we could try splitting up the islands that way and then packing it and just see what type of different solutions we get. But what we need to do is make the texel density completely uniform here because for example, this area in the center is going to have a much higher resolution and the area next to it, since the squares are bigger, is going to have a much lower resolution. And it's not going to make sense. It's like it's going to be clearer here, but blurrier here. It doesn't make sense. So everything needs to have the same size squares. So in a situation like this where you're using multiple different texture sets, what you want to do is go to the one that has the biggest square. So most likely that's going to be this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and um, use Zen UV here to get the texel density. And you're going to see this one is 1108 pixels per meter. I don't think these are any bigger. Okay, cool. So this is going to be the, um, be the one with the biggest squares. And the reason we want to sample from the one with the biggest size squares is because we can always scale down, but we can't always scale up. Let me show you what I mean. If I go to these squares, which are super, super small on this one here, I can easily scale these down, right? I can easily scale these down to get the same size squares that we have over here. And that's going to give us the result we want. So I could kind of scale this down and just eyeball it. And you're going to see that's a very easy way to, you know, get the same size squares. But you can't always scale up. Notice how if I scale up to make these smaller, we go outside of the UV bounds, which is going to end up causing tiling. So that's why you want to sample from the one with the biggest size squares because everything else will be smaller, meaning we can scale those in. So an easy solution to get the same texel density all around is to simply scale these in and just kind of eyeball it. So you just kind of go in and just eyeball all this stuff. We could do the same thing for these. We just scale it in and then kind of eyeball it. Now, this will technically work, but it's not going to be as accurate because if you want to get a truly accurate texel density, you're going to want to force it using the number right here. So if you want to get, you know, as much accuracy as possible, what you want to do is go to the squares that are the biggest, get the TD, and then you can select everything, go to island mode, and then set that TD. And then you're going to have a solution like this. And you're going to see if I go around to all these areas, all it really did was scale in these islands accordingly until it got the same exact size squares for each individual area. 
And this is actually an example of where um, not using all your UV space is actually more beneficial because of our use of multiple texture sets here. So yeah, it's um, for some reason I have an overlap right here. If you ever find yourself having overlaps, what you can do is just unwrap it again and then just set the TD and that'll generally fix it. So you can just kind of go in here and just check, see if you have any weird overlaps, which doesn't look like I do. Zen UV also has a feature to check for it, but as you can see, we now have a uniform texel density all around the mesh here. So this is the power of using multiple texture sets as opposed to one single material. If you're making a game asset, you're probably going to want to use like one material for an asset like this, maybe two, kind of depends on the situation. but. If you just want to get a good quality result and you want the best texture resolution possible, just split up all your different pieces of the mesh and give it its own material, give it its own texture set, because what you can actually end up getting are much smaller um, squares here, which is going to give you even better texture resolution. So this is how you can actually use multiple different materials to get a better resolution and also get the same exact texture density. So I know this workflow kind of gets complicated, but I hope it kind of gave you an idea of kind of how you can approach different situations like this. And I would seriously recommend picking up um, the Zen UV add-on for this. I think there's also a Texel Density Checker, which is free. Um, regardless, there's no native tools that allow you to determine the Texel Density in Blender. So you're gonna need some sort of add-on for this, or you're gonna have to scale in your squares manually and kind of eyeball it. But that's about it guys, I hope the video helped and I hope this gave you some insight onto different workflows you can use when um, approaching your UV unwrapping. So, I'll see you soon.